Um, thank you for being here. My name is Satopin and I'm so happy you're here. Uh, this is my uh, first video, um, bookish video that I'm making and I'm very, very excited. Um, I've been wanting to join the booktube community for so long because it's something I love to do. I love reading and to join a community where people are just talking about the books they read, the books they love, um, books they recommend. It sounds like such a fun community and I'm very happy to be joining it. Especially with the last two months where I've been kind of stuck at home, I've been binge watching booktube videos. It's just constantly playing in the background for me. And so I'm really happy to be making one of my own today. Um, today I'll be talking about the four books I read in May and I'm super excited to get started. So I have, if I look down it's because I have my notes in my bujo. <laughs> I wrote um, the books I read in my notes so um, I'm going to be looking at this to help me remember what I read. Okay, the first book I read was Green Island by Shauna Yang Ryan. Um, this was, was set in, in Taiwan. Um, it follows the Tsai family from 1940s to 2003. So it's a really long journey with the Tsai family. Um, so I grew attached to the family for sure. Um, it's 400 pages long. So yeah, by the end of the book, I was very sad to leave the family. <laughs> um, I grew attached to them. Um, it's interesting because the narrative of the book is um, from the perspective of a young, the youngest daughter of the family um, and she has no name throughout this whole book. Um, she is born in the beginning of the book where um, Taiwan just, uh, the Japanese colonial rule just ended in Taiwan and then the martial law started and um, the Chinese political party was taking over the, the island and they uh, it's, it was a scary time for her to be born um, it, because people, if people spoke their opinions or their thoughts, um, they could get arrested, um, they could get imprisoned, imprisoned and, or killed, um, and it kind of shows the after effects of when um, when this happens to one of the family member, they never quite go back to the normal family they used to be before. Um, so yeah, it follows the family after that and how the family has changed and how it has like a long like effect on the family um, for generations. So yeah, very, very good read. Um, I did, I, I still don't know much about Taiwanese history and I still need to educate myself on it. I gave it five stars um, on Goodreads and I would definitely recommend. Um, another thing about this book is that there aren't many ratings on Goodreads so another maybe reason for you to read it because not many people have read it and not many people know about it and I would totally recommend it. <laughs> um, the second book I read, oh actually no this was an audiobook. This is the only audiobook I listened to in May. Um, this is called The Henna Artist. Um, oh my I don't have the author. Oh by Alka Joshi. Um, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Maybe you can guess by the name um, of the book, The Henna Artist is uh, based in India and this was set in the 1950s. Um, it follows Lakshmi, which is the, the main girl. Um, she escapes uh, an abusive husband in like uh, one of the villages because she was married at uh, age 17. Um, so she escapes to the city of Jaipur, I don't know how to pronounce that city. Um, and she becomes a henna artist um, and she built up her like her reputation. So she gives henna um, on, on the bodies of wealthy families and wealthy women and she kind of gets into this circle. But one day her um, abusive husband or husband shows up, he finds her, um, but he also brings along a sister she didn't know existed so that's when kind of the drama starts in the in the story um and she has to kind of figure out who is the sister how to how to be an older sister and her life changes so very good read <clears throat> i think i would have enjoyed it if i read it um even though the audiobook was amazing the voice actress um pronounced everything perfectly and um 
she did the voice acting for different characters so it was really good but I think there were so many parts that I missed because I was kind of just listening to it while I was taking my dogs for a walk or I was doing other things um, because I think it, it is a very beautiful book um, so I ended up giving it four out of five stars um, but it was I would definitely I would definitely recommend reading it um, because it's a very beautiful book third book I read was The Memory Police by Yoko Ogawa um, this one I think more people know about um, so it's by a Japanese author. Yay, I'm Japanese. <laughs> um, the idea is that there is a small island where um, people kind of just start forgetting things randomly. So one day they might wake up and forget what a uh, rose is. So they have to get rid of all the roses and they start slowly forgetting any memory associated with roses. Um, there's also these people called the memory police. So if um, because some people did keep their memories, um, they couldn't get rid of their memories um, and they had to try to pretend that they forgot because if you show that you remember these things that should have disappeared from the island, the memory police will come and get you and you never find out what happened to these people. So the idea um, sounds very um, interesting. The book itself I found kind of... Mm, there, like there was something missing for me. Um, I think a lot of people loved this book. Um, I loved the idea of the whole story, but I felt like there could have been more. Um, especially the ending was kind of unsatisfactory for me. So I, yeah, kind of not disappointed. It wasn't horrible or anything. Just I was like, oh, I'm missing. Like I need more. So I give this book 3 out of 5 stars. Um, I still say it's an interesting read, so I wouldn't tell you not to read it. Um, but um, <laughs> I don't know, it's just mysterious the whole time. So you're kind of left wondering a lot. And if that's something you enjoy, then this might be the book for you. Okay, the fourth and final book. Um, I just... I finished this like last week so it kind of went into June but it's okay because I started in May. Um, the fourth and final book is called If You Leave Me. The book cover is beautiful. Um, it's by Crystal Hannah Kim. It's set in the 1950s to the 1960s in Korea. Um, it follows the characters during the Korean Civil War so when the North and the South Korea, uh, Korea were fighting and then after the war. Um, very interesting subject for me because again like Taiwan I don't know much about um, the Korean history and why this war started. I'm, it, the book doesn't really go into much of the why of the war. It doesn't teach you much about that. Um, so I'm interested in researching more about that especially um, because my sister is married to a Korean man so I feel like it's something I should know more about. Follows a uh, Hayami, who is the main character, the girl in the book, and it's kind of like a love triangle thing going on the whole book. Um, so she has a best friend called Kyung Hwan, and, um, and then uh, his kind of, not related by blood, but he calls him cousin, is Jisoo. And so um, G when Jisoo enters the picture, he is a rich boy from Seoul, the city of Seoul, and he comes to the countryside during the civil war because it's safer um, and he wanted to take care of his cousin, Kyung, Kyung Hwan. <laughs> um, but that's when kind of the love triangle starts and it follows Haimi while she grows up because I think it's when she's 16 or 17 years old this starts and then um, it follows her while she, and when she gets um, when she starts a family of her own and um, she never fully becomes herself again after this one decision she makes and so yeah it just shows how one decision can really change um, your life and also everyone else's life um, uh, there was lots of regret throughout this book, so it was definitely 
kind of like a sad uh, tone throughout the book. Um, you feel very uh, sympathetic towards the characters. Um, so yeah, not a happy light read for sure, um, but it was beautiful. And I don't know what what it is about the book that was so beautiful, but I kept reading. Um, this one again was 417 pages long, so it was long for me, um, but I never felt like I wanted to put it down. Like it was, there was just something about the book that was mesmerizing for me, it grasped me. Um, so yes, I gave this book 5 out of 5 stars and I would I would highly recommend. <laughs> so this month of June, I want to continue pushing myself to read more diverse books. Um, this month is Pride Month as we know, so I'll be reading LGBTQ um, books and I will also be reading anti-racism books. Currently I am reading So You Want to Talk About Race and I'm only currently um around 28 percent of the book but oh my gosh like already this book is blowing me away um so many parts where i have to write down the quotes in my reading journal or where i have to pause and think about what she's saying um very powerful book so i am excited to finish reading that book uh that's it for me today i finally finished my first booktube video I'm so happy. Um, this was very, very fun. I liked talking about books. <laughs> so I really hope I can make more book re bookish related videos. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm so, ha um, I'm so happy and grateful that you are here today with me. Um, and I hope to see you next time. Thank you. Bye.